Okay, so say you want to run two versions of Blender 2.9 on your system. There are a couple of ways that you could do that. You could install it on a different user or even on a different computer. That would kind of defeat the point. In fact, being on a different user can be annoying by itself because all of your other programs might not be set up ready for you. But if you try and install two copies of Blender 2.9, it's not going to work because they both reach into the same app data folder. So we need to set it up in a very specific way so we can run two versions or rather two copies of the same version of Blender. Let's find out more. There are numerous reasons why you want to do this, including add-on development or perhaps teaching. If you teach Blender, you often want a more vanilla setup. So let's go ahead and do this now. We download Blender 2.9. I've already got Blender 2.9 on my system. It's the one that I personally use. So I don't want to download the general installer. I want to look at the other versions. Let's click on that and get the portable zip. Now this is the same if you're running on other platforms as well. You want to get that zip file. That'll take a few seconds to download and then we will extract it. Now one of the things that will catch you out, if we go ahead and run, so Windows key and R, search for app data, it will open up your app data folder. Now, if you go to the roaming folder in there and go to Blender Foundation, Blender, we will see all of the different versions that I have installed on this particular system. So if I just go ahead and run Blender from this particular zip file, so we need to extract it first, let's extract it all. We can see I've already done that, so I'll jump straight to my documents and run it from there. Okay, so we've extracted Blender 2.9, it's zip file. If I just go ahead and double click on Blender, it will open up Blender 2.9, but it will reach into the app data folder in your user directory and use whatever settings you've got in there. So in this particular case, it's going to include all of the add-ons that I generally use. And the problem of that, of course, is if I'm teaching or anything else along those lines, there's a series of tabs and extra bits and bobs that you don't want appearing to confuse someone watching you. That's the primary reason why I would want to do this. And I want to give a shout out here to Chip Walters. He helped me out massively by actually telling me the very easy way of sorting this out. So I thought I'd share it with everybody who might want to know that. So this has got all of my settings in. I don't want that. Simple way of solving this. Go into that folder that says 2.9. Of course, in the future, this may say 2.91, whatever. Right click and create a new folder and call it config, C-O-N-F-I-G. When we do that, we go up a level again and rerun Blender. This time it will look at that config file. We can see straight away the interface is the wrong scaling. So we know immediately we now have a blank Blender file to work with. And of course, then you can go in. The first thing I always do is turn up this. I'm gonna set it stupidly high for the moment so that everybody can see what's going on. So there we go, multiple copies of the same version of Blender. That's how you do it. See you later.